Hello there, and you are highly welcome to this class. This mathematics tutorials presented to you by O3 Schools Jump App. Now, well, um, your O3 Schools Jump App is an application which can install on both your Android phones and also your laptops, and it will provide you with the past questions which you need to know while preparing for Jump. Now, you may ask if you just pass questions, why then do I know the app? But it also has a lot more features other than the past questions. Um, for one, the O3 Schools Jump app also provides a mock exam scenario in which you can actually set a mock exam for yourself to see how well you perform if you are trying to take in your exam. And this mock exam is very, very fluid. You can arrange it to suit you. You can change the time, number of subjects, even the subjects themselves, yes. And you can also change the number. In fact, within a particular subject, you could specify the topics you want the questions to be asked from. You see? So if you do that, you're actually able to learn those past questions properly in an easy way. It can help you arrange the questions by topic, which your physical past question cannot do. And also, for those of us who are not very computer inclined, if you install this on your laptops, you're actually able to see how it would appear exactly on the day of your jump. So you could practice as many times as you can before actually going to write the actual exam on that day. And well, once you install the app though, it doesn't just work for free, no. You are going to have to activate the application. The activation fee is simply 2,500 Naira. That's all you shall pay for this app. And you'll be able to use every single feature that comes with the app. So not just, um, the past questions. There are many that things. There's a question search feature. It even provides information such as um, different schools in Nigeria, um, the courses offered by those schools, so you can know if you're trying to study that try in this university or not. And then even the requirements you would requ you need to study that particular course. So we advise you on the YX subject combination and also the JAM subject combination. The other schools JAM app has a lot of features assessed purely on the one-time payment of 2,500 Naira. So once you pay this amount, you are able to assess anything. And how do you pay? Well, there are several methods and they are available to you within the app. You could pay by transfer, transfer to the bank account, which you see in the app. You could also pay online using your debit card, your ATM card and pay stack. So it's, there are many ways. Just get your app, install it, activate. And I assure you, the app will help you greatly as you prepare to write your jam. And with that, let's focus on what we shall be doing to, in this class. We shall be studying quadrilaterals. Now, in the previous video, we've looked at polygons, but we're simply calculating the number of sides and you know the angles within. Now, quadrilaterals are polygons, yes. So these are special. These are shapes with four sides. Any four-sided shape is a quadrilateral. And there are quite many. You may know a lot of them. There is the square. There is the rectangle. There is the parallelogram. There is the trapezium. And there are actually some that are less common. There's the kite, and there's also the rhombus. However, for the scope of this class, Jam doesn't ask questions dealing with kites and rhombus. So we shall ignore those two and focus purely on these four square, rectangle, parallelogram, and trapezium. Now, the first thing you need to know is if the question is simply drawn for you, you know, not you are not told explicitly what shape it is. If you simply have a diagram, how do you know the difference between these types of shapes? Well, let's start with square. Square is actually like the easiest one. A square is a quadrilateral, which is a shape with four sides. And what makes a square special is that, well, all the angles are 90 degrees and also all the sides are equal. So these are the two identifying traits of the square all four sides equal and all angles equal and 90 degrees now please note 
the indications of these single lines on this shape tells you that every line carrying this short line is equal to any other line carrying it. That is a, a method used in geometry. Now, the reason for this is because at times they will draw your question, but it doesn't quite look perfect. They may want to draw a square, but if you look at it, you know, and kind of estimate the measurement of your eye, you think it's a rectangle. How do you differentiate? Check for these markings. For example, a rectangle is kind of like a square. Also, four sides. And the angles are all also 90 degrees. However, in a rectangle, just opposite sides are equal. Then this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So how do they specify it? By drawing double lines here. You see, this is what makes a rectangle different from a square. These double lines mean that all sides carrying double lines are equal, while those sides carrying single lines are equal. In a square, all four are equal because they all carry single lines. And also, key to note, in a rectangle and in a square, opposite sides are parallel. Parallel lines are lines that will never ever meet, which means, I know my drawing is a bit wobbly, but if it was perfect, I'll be having two lines going separately or ever. That's rectangle, that's square. Now, parallelogram, it's also a four-sided shape, but unlike your rectangle, it seems kind of slanted. Now, it bears some properties in common with your rectangle. Opposite sides are equal and parallel, implying that this equals this and this equals this. However, the basic difference between your parallelogram and your rectangle is that the angles are no longer 90 degrees. Instead, this angle equals this angle, and this angle, which I shall not double, equals this angle, which means opposite angles are actually equal, while these angles on the same side are supplementary meaning they add up to 180 degrees. So this is a parallelogram. Then the trapezium is pretty special. Trapezium is simply a shape in which no sides are equal. Typically, no sides can be equal. In some occasions, though, they happen to have some sides equal. So how do you differentiate it? Well, it will have two sides parallel, but that will be all. This could be a trapezium. What makes it special? Like I said, this is parallel to this. However, this and this are not parallel. That is its defining straight. So a trapezium can have all four sides unequal. And most importantly, only two sides are ever parallel in a trapezium. So it could end like this. Some are more like this. In some cases, in some trapeziums, this side and this side are equal but no matter how equal they will be they are never ever parallel that's the defining trait it always has two sides being parallel to each other the other two sides are not and please note trapeziums could be made to stand up in plan i could have a trapezium like this don't get confused what happens here this is not my parallel side parallel side that is the defining trait of trapeziums. Now, in all these shapes, they also have um, perimeters and areas. They all have perimeters and areas. But for now, we simply have to know, perimeters don't need a special formula. Perimeter is simply the sum of all the sides. So for example, length, 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 length. If I add up all four lengths, which is basically four L, that's my perimeter. Why for rectangle, if I call here length and breadth, that's also length and that's also breadth. So it is two length plus two breadth. You see, so you don't really need any special formula for perimeters. However, for areas, you require special formulas. Now let's see what they are. For a square, area of a square is L squared, L times L. Area of a rectangle is LB length times breadth. Now for a parallelogram, it's going to be different. We're going to have this down part being the base, and then even if I call it L, 
there will also be another shape side here which is known as the perpendicular height very key the key here is that for a parallelogram it is the base times the perpendicular height and never ever the slanted height so remember in a parallelogram my area is the base times the perpendicular height the height measured at 90 degrees not the slanted height l why last but not least for a trapezium we always have two parallel sides which we can call a and b like in this case i can call it a and b then also it will also have a perpendicular height h now in this case because my a and b are vertical my height should be horizontal now remember this side could be anyhow it doesn't really matter we almost always use now this place looks like horizontal do but doesn't really matter to us that will now be our perpendicular distance so in a trapezium the parallel sides then the perpendicular distance between those two parallel sides are what we use to find the area and how do we do so area equals one over two the sum of the parallel sides times that distance between them so these are the four key quadrilaterals which jam asks often and these are the formulas for their areas so the questions could come in any manner which you have to remember in addition to this um uh, it's a very, very simple concept which is quite simply um Pythagoras theory which you should know reason why is that if you look at this shape they could form a triangle here they could divide your rectangle with a line passing through the middle or your square you can do the same even here you do the same now please note that this line drawn from one corner of the rectangle of the quadrilateral to another corner is known as a diagonal the line drawn from one corner to another corner is a diagonal and if i draw a diagonal through my four sided shapes it forms two triangles so at times i'd have to use my knowledge of Pythagoras theory from triangles when analyzing my quadrilaterals but for now this is all into neighbor quadrilaterals please take down your formulas and next up, we'll open our old three schools jump app and try to see how to put the formulas into practice when it comes to solving questions on the quadrilaterals. So let's begin, shall we? All right, so open my app. Our first question is brought to us from the year 2006, and it was question number 46 that year. Number one, this one says the cost of renovating a six meter square room. A six meters square room. That's me telling me that my room is square in shape. And when renovating it, the cost was 514 naira. Question is now what is the cost of renovating? a nine meters squared room and now i want to renovate a room that is nine meters squared so quite simply what can i do the way i've written it actually gives you a very simple analogy which you can use and what is the analogy is that if six meters is 540 how much is one meters we could try that out so if six is 540 then one meter squared, remember six meters squared, nine meters squared, then one meter squared must be 540 over six. And when you do that, you get 90 naira. So basically, it's as though we are charging 90 naira per meter squared. That is why when we renovated six meter squared, it cost me, you know, 540. And accordingly, therefore, nine meter squared would cost me. 19 era times 9 because i'm renovating 9 of these and that gives me 810 nera which is option d you see in this one i did not have to draw a shape i just had to make sure i did not get confused 
I'll do simple analysis and I will get my answer. Okay, that's our first question. Very, very easy. Our next question is from the year 2007. Now we're going to 2007, and this is question 50. Well, this one says the area of a square is 144 squared centimeters. 144 cm squared. Find the length of the diagonal. Let's see what we can do. If I draw a square now, just so I can see it, a square has four sides L, 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 and L. And this, let's call it D, is a diagonal. Now the area is 144. I want to find the diagonal. As I'm aware, if I take out just you know, half of this square, that gives me a triangle. I know this type of triangle, a right angle triangle. And I know that with Pythagoras theory, if I know both these sides, I can get my diagonal. Also, that becomes how do I obtain my length then? Since I know the area, I'll simply recall that area equals length squared. To find length, I simply take the square root of both sides. Square root cancel square there. So length equals to the square root of the area. And we know that the area is 144. Therefore, the square root of 144 is 12 centimeters. So now I know my length. Therefore, on knowing my length, I can come back here and say, applying Pythagoras theory, the square of my hypotenuse of this right angle triangle equals to the square of one side plus the square of the other side. Therefore, this squared will be 12 squared plus 12 squared. That will give me 144 plus 144. And 144 plus 144 is 288. Now, to get rid of this square, I take the square root of both sides. And this equals to the square root of 288. So if you check your options, your options come in sort form. So I have to take this 288 back to sort form. How do I do that? I know that 288 is 144 times 2. What is the square root of 144? 12 root 2 centimeters. And as you can see my options, that is option B. See, see, the questions are actually easy. Just remember I said before in my explanation that at times, if I cut a triangle, we really end up dealing with Pythagoras theory. So that is why we had to use that right there. So, let's see. Moving on, my next question is from the year 2020, model 2. Question 8, only on your O3 schools jam app. This one is given to me in story form. And it says, the length of a rectangle is 5 greater than twice its width. Now, first of all, I know that twice its width means 2 times the width. If the length is greater than mu by 5, that means that the length is 5 plus whatever you have. One more time. If I'm 5 years older than you, it means that my age is 5 plus your age. Therefore, if the length is 5 greater than twice the width, it means that the length will be 5 plus twice, which is 2 times the width. So I think that my length should be giving me the expression 5 plus 2w. Okay? Next, it says, if the perimeter of the rectangle is 34 cm, perimeter is 34 cm, find the difference between the length and the width. Now, be careful. They don't ask you to find the length or to find the width. That's to find the difference. And how do you, what are the differences in mathematics? In mathematics, difference means subtract. So the three we want is also to find L minus W. So I'm going to do this very carefully. Well, I know perimeter. How can I find perimeter of a rectangle normally? I should know that perimeter is going to be length plus length plus width plus width. Remember, rectangle is like this. Length, length, width, width. I'm having two lengths 
plus two weights. Two of these and two of these add all together. That's my perimeter. So I know that the perimeter is 34. And the length can be expressed in the form 5 plus 2w. Why the width can just be left as 2w? So this is a very, very simple linear equation. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4w plus 2w. So 34, bring 10 to the left, minus 10 equals 4 plus 2, 6w. 24 minus 10 is 24 equals 6w over 6 and over 6, which means that w must be 24 over 6, which gives me 4 centimeters. Now, remember to be careful. 4 might be my options, but that is definitely not my answer. Next, I want to find the length. Length is 5 plus 2w, as you can see here. But in this case, any w is 4. That's 5 plus 2 times 4 is 8, and that is 13 centimeters. Now, again, 13 is in your options. But this is why you generally do not rush to your answers. Because the question does not tell you to find the length or to find the width. No, to need to find the difference between the length and the width. And to be finding L minus W, not just L and not just W. So my length is 13 and my weight is 4. 13 minus 4 gives me 9 centimeters, which is option C. So I hope you get this. Solving might be easy, but at times we tend to jump to conclusions and share the wrong answers only because we're in a hurry. So just remember to be careful and always make sure you are reading your question well and try analyzing before you just jump and solve. Okay, our next question is from the year 2013 and this is actually question 27. And this one says, a square tail, a square tail has side 30 cm. So, length is 30 cm. How many of these tiles will it take to cover a rectangular floor of length? So, because I now have two things now, let me call this length of square. The rectangular floor has a length, so length of rectangle, 7.2 meters, and width, width of rectangle, 4.2 meters. Now, this one is quite easy. Just what you have to remember, a tile, plural of tile is tiles, like what you have in your bedroom, on the floors of your house, your marble tiles and all that. Now, we are told we have a single square tile having length of 30 cm. And we want to use to cover this particular area. Now, keep that way in mind. The key is area. We want to use this square tile to cover this particular area. So, the question is, how many square tiles are going to have an area equal to the area of the ground. Now, before you make a silly mistake, first thing you must note, the units are different. Centimeters, meters, meters. Just as you cannot compare Naira to dollars without converting both to the same unit, you cannot compare centimeters and meters unless they are both in the same units. And it will be easier to simply just convert these meters to centimeters. How? Meter to CM is always multiplied by 100. This will give me 720 centimeters, while this is 420 centimeters. So, is this simple? What do I do now? I simply say the number of tiles I need times the area of one tile must be equal to the area of rectangle. See? So, I know I need more than one square tile because the square tile is too small. 30 by 30 cannot cover 720 by 420 on its own. I need more than one. So, if I add all those square tiles I need together, they ought to give me the area of the rectangle. So, how many of them do I need? I'm going to find out. So, n times the area of the square is length times length. So, that will be 30 times 30 equals the area of the rectangle is 720 
times 420. 30 times 30 is 900. That is 900 in. Then um, let's just open our calculator and see what 720 times 420 will give us. So, opening my calculator here, 720 times 420 is 302,400. So, over 900, over 900. These cancel out. These zeros may cancel out. So, I'm having 3024 divided by 9. And that gives me 336 which is option C. You see, I'll be needing 336 of these square tiles in order to properly cover 7.2 meters by 4.2 meters area. So you see the analysis, very, very easy. As long as you know your shape and the formula for that shape, you always get your answer. Okay. Our next question is brought to us from the year 2022, model 2, and this time this is question 6. This one actually says, the angle between any two sides of a parallelogram is 90 degrees. Now what this question does is that it kind of shows you a special thing. If you remember, the relationship between your rectangle and your parallelogram is while they are almost the same, the rectangle is 90 degrees and the parallelogram is not 90. So that means, since they are telling me here that the area or the angle rather between any two sides of a parallelogram is 90 degrees, it means in reality, I am dealing with a rectangle. See, the so rectangle is a parallelogram where the angles are 90. Once the angles are no longer 90, it then falls under the general parallelogram solving well, since i said it is 90 here yeah, and i don't have to stress myself well the length of the two parallel sides is four and six that means my length can be four cm and my breadth can be six cm find the area well the area is simply going to be area of rectangle length times breadth four times six and 24 cm squared option d so you see how simple this is the only trick in this question is to recognize that your rectangle and your parallelogram are related and the relationship is simply based on the angle. So I'll repeat one more time for emphasis. A parallelogram whose angles are 90 degrees is a rectangle. That's all. Okay. Now, my next question actually doesn't have any bit of solving in it whatsoever. All I have to do in this question is simply note that, okay, it's a story. This time it's from 2017, model 2, model 1, sorry, 2017, model 1, question 22. And it gives me some options and I have to analyze. What it's saying is, which of the above is true for a parallelogram? Which of these is true for a parallelogram? Number one, opposite sides are equal and parallel. Let's just draw a parallelogram so we can analyze together. You know that this is equal to this, and this equals this. These are equal. These are equal. So it says opposite sides are equal and parallel. True. Equal, equal, and also parallel. So number one is true. Two, opposite angles are equal opposite angles facing each other equal facing each other equal that means number two is also true three opposite angles are supplementary supplementary angles add up to 180 and that is not true in this case actually angles that are supplementary are those touching the same line these two are supplementary these two are supplementary these two are supplementary and these two are supplementary but they're not opposite so number three is wrong four says the diagonals bisect each other well obviously i draw a diagonal from here to here and i draw one from here to here they bisect each other they definitely mix that means that number four 
is true then that my answer should be one two and four which when you look at your options is very clearly option a okay see the nice is simple just know the shape and solving is simple now I'll repeat again that was from 2017 model one question 22 okay now for our seventh question this time from 2003 question 25 we are told a trapezium so it told us the shape already trapezium has two parallel sides of length 5 and 9 cm let me draw we know a trapezium has two parallel sides obviously which is here and here and I'm told they're having lengths of 5 cm and 9 cm. If the area is 21 cm squared, find the distance between the parallel sides. And we said the distance between the parallel sides is this 90 degrees line, the h. So, what's the for area of a trapezium? a equals 1 over 2, a plus b, h. But I know that A is 21, 1 over 2. My opposite sides are my A and B. My parallel and opposite sides. So that is 5 plus 9 times H. Well, cross multiply. 2 times 21 is 42. 5 plus 9, yeah, is 14. And that is H. Over 14, over 14. Implying that H must be 42 over 14 which is three centimeters. And that is option C. So I could understand this because quadrilaterals are actually quite easy. One of the easiest topics you shall find in your mathematics jam. Very, very easy to solve. And now we have one last question that we are going to attempt. This time, this is from 1998. This was question 43. This one also has a diagram. Let's draw it, shall we? So we can analyze together. Something of this sort. Then there's something here. This is P Q S T. And here is 10 cm. And here is 8 cm. It says in the figure. PQST is a parallelogram. That means this is a parallelogram. And this night I have to ask myself, what do I know about parallelograms? Well, I could just show in our last, I think on our second to last question, in question six, for parallelograms, opposite sides are equal and parallel. Okay. And we are told, and CS arrow is a straight line. This is arrow. This is one single straight line. If the area of triangle QROS is 20 cm squared, area of triangle QROS equals to 20 cm squared, find the area of the trapezium PQROT. And now find area of PQROT. Now, in this question, it's quite simple. What we know is that um, simply the area of this side has been given to us, but we want the area of everything. Well, there are two ways I could go about that. Number one, is there some way I could find the area of this parallelogram? If I could find the area of just this compartment, PQST, once I add it to this 20, which represents QROS, I will also get the area for what? everything but looking at it straightforward right now do i know a way to do that do i know a way to do that yes i do how do i i know that area of trapezium sorry area of parallelogram must be base times the perpendicular height not the length implying that i need to know the height from here to here h but a bit of common sense will tell me that that height is also the height of this place because you know single straight line therefore why does that hurt me because if i remember from triangles 
area of a triangle equals half base times height but you're using the base of the triangle itself now not the base of the parallelogram which means that the area of the triangle is going to be as 20 that will be half the base of this triangle here is eight centimeters i want to find that height so here is one so here is four 20 that's four 20 equals 4h over 4 over 4 and h is 20 over 4 which is 5 centimeters you see once i know that this height is 5 cm i can then say that area of it's a writing parallelogram let me just write it by its name which is s p q t s okay actually in proper order it should actually be let's go from here p coming here q going down s and then going left t will be the base using this formula here the base is 10 over here and the height is 5 10 times 5 is 50 centimeters squared and therefore total area this area of p q r t becomes 50 plus 20 which is 70 centimeters squared and when i check my options that is option c you see very very easy and that was one way of solving it by finding the area of this parallelogram an alternative way which you can try on your own is after finding this my height rather than finding the um area of the parallelogram i could have found the area of the trapezium by itself how do i do that i know that if here is 10 then here must also be 10 and if here is 10 and here is 8 then everything must be 18. if i just do that quickly over here as in 20 go of solving then that area equals 1 over 2 a plus b h where a and b are the parallel sides so that's 10 plus 18 times this h which we got as 5. That gives me 1 over 2. 10 plus 18 is 28 times 5. 2 into here is 1. 2 to 28 is 14. And 14 times 5 is 70. So you see the same thing. Anyhow you solve it, as long as you follow the proper rules for your quadrilaterals and use the proper values, you always get the same answer. So, this is all we shall be solving for this class on quadrilaterals. But as usual, it's time to give you some questions which you can try by yourself at home and report to us as to what you get for your answer. Or if you are correct, we shall of course confirm it to you. And if you are wrong, we will always endeavor to give you the right steps to get your correct answers so if you just try these few questions which you can only find on your o3 screws jam app so 2006 question 36 so try your hand on these three questions and do remember to comment your answer below the video also subscribe to this channel to get access to many more videos covering a wide range of topics across the different subjects which you need as you prepare for your jam also get your o3 schools jam app and activate my name is athanasius thank you very much for watching